since he's able to get plus one much before me so if I wanna match his upgrades which is pretty important actually uh, I gotta have two evolution chambers and uh, well uh, I usually start two evolution chambers anyway but uh, this time uh, it was a little bit faster than my average uh, evolution chamber maybe I'm making some extra Corsair I mean Scorch uh, to counter his Corsairs uh, since my mutas are weak HP so or alive or whatever so he, he might if he makes a few more he, he'll be able to pick them off instantly and that's gonna be a huge loss for me so I made a few extra scorch uh, as well as for observers as this so it's it's fine um bring my lurkers over here burrowing I'm trying to make a lurker block over here Th this is uh, quite well it it doesn't happen so often anymore since usually uh if if a Zerg is able to make a lurker block uh to a protoss uh and the Zerg didn't even make it some especially fast which uh, he had to sacrifice economy for it means that uh, there's something wrong with the toss uh, at least most of the time anyway uh, this time though I was able to pick off his high templars I was able to slow his gateways down a lot so he couldn't really move out before I was pretty well uh, it was good for me um, remember to keep adding more and more units over here keep bringing more uh, I'm also trying to bring my overlord over so I'm able, able to get some detection and more than anything I gotta have a lot of lurkers if I don't have a lot of lurkers it's just gonna be bad uh, remember to come with it from a di different direction with the scorch than uh, meet us at least somewhat that way uh, I'm able to do much more damage with them um, he got a little bit greedy with his Corsairs over here which really cost him a lot uh, meanwhile I'm able to take some expansions and uh, and, and keep making drones while m dedicating a few hatcheries to what units uh, you usually my policy I is that uh, unless I have a specific reason every single expansion is gonna make their own drones and that way I will I will not only have uh, enough units but uh, I will still be keep uh, getting better and better economy so it's just uh, gonna pay off well um, and I don't really recommend going in a, some sort of all-in block where you just trying to force uh, some ridiculous block no matter what and it's and if you lose it's over I don't really prefer that since pretty much every single toss is gonna break out of your block sooner or later so you gotta have a little bit extra for yourself when when he breaks out if he breaks out but most likely he will uh, using these middle discs not only to um, for high Templars and whatever Corsair counter and whatever else but also to pick up observers off. I was a little bit careless over here here so uh, his uh, observer was able to survive meanwhile I start uh, I have uh, quite a few gases I have like four gases or so so I, I can start ultra link tech pretty freely he's finally able to break out and uh, that means that since his army at the moment is slightly stronger than mine uh, I'm gonna make some sunken colonies usually uh, uh, so I'm making some colonies with the Zerg is kind of like like a last resort uh, so since it's kind of like a decent defense fast and so on um, and usually Zergs don't use it unless they feel the, like uh, they they don't feel confident like blocking their army otherwise so uh, that's why I made uh, some sunken colonies over here except for my main which had a lot of uh, lurkers and I'm able to replenish that ar army real quick um, Thankfully, he attacked my main instead of my expansion, so I'm able to keep this one for now at least. Um, I'm also starting my ultra tech. Uh, one thing though, if I don't have a decent economy while I start ultra tech, it's it's just gonna turn out worse than making pure lurkerling, since the uh, lurkers with the crackling is like extremely powerful combination, and uh, and you just gotta use that to your full advantage until until your economy can properly stand ultra lean tech. Uh, sometimes if I've started uh, ultra links way too fast uh, without actually being able to handle it it's just cost me the game since uh, I have like maybe four or five ultras and that that really isn't anything compared to his army I would have been far better off with making lurkers uh, to kind of like destroy his zealots with, that, with those lurkers and just for defense and so on um, and yeah so I made a few more lurkers and right now would be a good time to start ultras really 
Oh, I made one extra sunken colony as well to my expansion since three three just doesn't cut it. Um, I'm also spreading my lurkers over here. Uh, that way I'm sort of like making a lurker block. Of course, uh, it's useful to have scorches over there if you're not, especially have scorches if you're not confident with your with your army or your army size or whatever, since uh, those scorches uh, can be very valuable in picking off his observers, and that way kind of like stopping the attack and giving you more time to make more units and so on. Um, now it's just a macro part and getting your economy up and being able to keep your expansions uh, unlike what most seem to think uh, Azurg, at least at the, at the mid and early game, aren't really supposed to have a goal of destroying his opponent's army without letting him expand. It's more like not letting your opponent expand while keeping your own expansions. That's actually for ZVT as well, and that's actually really useful. But, uh, well, of course you can attack his army if you think you can win. Uh, that's a that's a big bonus. But uh, it's not like you're you you should do do that every single time. It's far more important to keep your expansions and so on. Uh, um, over here he has dragoons uh, against only ultras, which means that, that my ultras is pretty much gonna die. Uh, I was sort of aware of that, but I just had to stop this attack. Dragoons do 100% damage to dragoons, and 